Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do the actual uh, verifying of the crank trigger sensor and setting it. I figure we got Joey's bus here. He's got a Phytech on it. It's the perfect time to do it. You will need a timing light in order to do this. To make your life easy, I recommend rotating the motor so it's at TDC and putting it at 10 degrees on the split line of the case. Then slide your sensor over the magnet that's on the pulley that we've installed and get yours lined up with it. You'll also want to phase your distributor. Now, when we send you the distributor, it'll have the mark here. And then what you're gonna do is pull the cap off and rotate the body until it lines up with the distributor. But when the distributor is at 20 degrees, I know a little confusing, call me and I'll explain that part. But I'm not gonna cover that in this video. This is gonna be all about verifying the timing, basically. All right, so once you've got the crank trigger verified, you've got your distributor phased, next thing you're going to do is you're going to go on the handheld. Let me show you that. Okay, you'll want to go inside, turn your key on. Then, in this case, Joey has his handheld up here. We're going to go on, using the little joystick little buttons, I'm going to come down and scroll down to go EFI, initial setup. Press the OK button. Then go down to ignition setup, press OK. And then under this section here, you'll see you got your 10 degrees, which is your crank trigger or distributor base timing, uh, depending on what you're using. Uh, lock spark adjust is going to be the verifying. Sorry, there's a reflection. That's going to be the verifying number, basically, where the computer is going to lock and hold the timing for us. And it's basically asking you, hey, what would you like to, for it to be held at? I, I put them at 30. So leave that there. Locked, uh, lock timing to set. It's unlocked currently. So we're going to go down here. Now, before we click anything, we're going to start the vehicle. Start the vehicle up, then come to this and change it from unlocked, using the little arrow buttons, bloop, to lock, press the OK button. Doop. Now it's locked the timing for us. So if the car was running, let's pretend it's running, it would lock the timing for us. Okay, so once you've got that, you're gonna come back here with the timing light. Now pretend the motor's running. I'm not gonna do it with the motor running because it'd be too loud. You're going to put your timing light on it. You're going to grab the throttle and get it off of idle. Basically, bring it up to 1,000, 1,500, whatever. 1,700, it's irrelevant. And then what you're looking for is 30 degrees on the split line of the case with the timing light. As you remember on the handheld, it was asking for the verifying number that it's going to lock it to. It's going to lock it and hold it at 30 degrees for us. As long as you're above idle, you'll see that suddenly appear. If yours is showing 30, you're golden. If yours is off two degrees, you'll come up here and change your distributor base timing two degrees. Now you'll, let's just say you take it for 10, you go down to eight, then you're gonna go back with your timing light. So in this case, the motor's still running, you're doing all this continuous, you're not shutting the motor down, and you're gonna see if, you're, if it's on the mark now. If the two degree change up front, made it perfect here, bitchin', you're done. If it didn't, if you're going in the wrong direction, go back up on the handheld, go the other way, come back here and verify. Now remember, if any time the motor stalls or turns off on you or dies, or you, you have to go eat lunch and you wanna come back and finish this, it'll automatically resort to unlocked. Now it might display locked on the screen, but if you back out of it and then come back into it, You'll notice that it'll show as, well, in this case, sorry, I still have it locked, but it'll show it unlocked. There you go, it's trying, it's trying. There you go. It'll show it unlocked, basically. Now, once you've done, you've got the timing at the back correct, you've got your adjustment here, the last thing you're gonna do is set up your VR drift. Now, the VR drift, you're gonna do basically what it says, you're gonna rev it to 4,000 RPMs. Kind of an aggressive rev on the motor. So, with the motor revved up to four grand, with the timing still locked at the handheld, you're going to look to see if you see 30 degrees. If when you rev it to four grand, it moves to back here 27, whatever, it, it goes like three degrees, four degrees off, you see it moves, you're going to go on the handheld and change that VR basically number. You're going to change that until when you rev this, it doesn't move, you still see 30. That's what you're changing, basically. So the inherent loss of the electronics, basically, and everything traveling through here, coming to your timing light and you go to display it, ah, it takes time, surprisingly. And you're just basically chasing that. Once that's done, you turn the key off, it'll automatically turn off the feature, and you are done with the timing. 
Next is setting the idle air control. I think that'll be tomorrow. 